Legal trickery is not permitted. This is a court of fact. We humans know our past, even when we're ashamed of it. I recognize this court system as the one that agreed with that line from Shakespeare. Kill all the lawyers. Which was done. Leading to the rule, guilty until proven innocent. Of course. Bringing the innocent to trial would be unfair. You will now answer to the charge of being a grievously savage race. Grievously savage could mean anything. I will answer only specific charges. Are you certain you want a full disclosure of human ugliness? So be it, fool. Present the charges! Criminal, you will read the charges to the court. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Monk Luigi and welcome to the temple where I go ahead and go over scrolls of things that are going on in our lives or what's going on in science, philosophy, biology, and in certain shows or maybe what's in the news. And of course, as you saw from the thumbnail in the introduction, I'm talking about some Star Trek. And yes, this is still episode one. I was supposed to do a part two to the series, but hey, you know, kind of busy doing what I can when I can how I do it. But y'all don't care about that. Y'all just want to know what this part two is about. And from that clip that I showed, it's pretty much going to delve into the philosophy of savagery. Are we, as human beings, guilty beyond reasonable doubt of being complete savages? Just straight up, uncaring, unnurturing people who will initially go straight to destructive and chaotic forces. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and keep going deep into this little well. So, <laughs> if you haven't seen the episode, uh, first of all, I don't know why it took y'all so long just to see this episode. As I said in the first video, part one of uh, Star Trek, y'all should have seen the first episode. It was beautiful, wonderfully set, wonderfully sound, so much to pull from, so much philosophy, so much to get you interested into the characters. Y'all should have been watching. So you need to watch this episode. This is the first one. It's the first episode. First episode. Anyway, um, we were talking about the introduction of a gentleman named Q and a captain Jean-Luc Picard. Now I'm not gonna go into too much of spoilers because as I said the series is wonderful but these two characters are the first characters you run right into and with Q he is pretty much like the god figure of the Star Trek universe. He can do and be and go wherever he wants to and in the course of this episode Q pulls all of the staff members that are human, and I want y'all to key in on that, only the human staff members were pulled into this court system. And what were we on trial for? The human race, not, you know, Hispanic, black, Jew, whatever, any like Asian, blue, green, yellow, no other alien species, it was just the human race themselves. And mind you, we got Cleons, we've got what you call it, robots, well, you, well Data did get pulled in. But we got, we got other species on this ship, and the only one that he was so pronounced on, giving the ultimate punishment to, was the human race. And the punishment in the court system, and I will spoil that a little bit, was not being able to venture out of our galaxy while we were in this episode. So the punishment is, hey, we shouldn't leave and venture out and explore the universe due to the fact that we are such a savage species. We've done countless upon countless crimes Amongst, amongst the galaxy, amongst ourselves, on this planet, which I'm gonna list somewhere on this screen. So you can see all of the negative vices that we have, whether it came to war, uh, to murder, to, to destruction, to whatever it is that I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna probably pull like top five, top five, you know, um, negatives. 
that we inevitably as a human race will always go back to it irregardless of what circumstance we run into because it's just what it is in our nature it's programmed into our dna to be savages amongst any race amongst ourselves except for dogs dogs for some reason always get a leeway <laughs> but i wanted to get into something that i ran across um, as I was watching this episode, and it made me start thinking a little bit. And I didn't know about this um, this speech that was given, nor did I know that someone was going to actually dig into it. So I want to show this article. I'm going to read it. And then after I read it, uh, I'm going to give my two cents to the verdict of being yeah. guilty. Okay, so I'm going to do a transition real quick. So here's one. Boom. So came across this article, Taming the Savageness of Man, excuse me, by Robert Kennedy, Edith Hamilton, and their sources. So, as I was reading, I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can see it on the, on the screen for yourself. Hold on, maybe I'm going to have to magnify it, zoom in a little bit. But I'm gonna, I wanted to go over this little segment here where Mr. Robert Kennedy as he was giving his speech after the death of Martin Luther King, he went ahead and stated this. Let us dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Let us dedicate ourselves to that and say a prayer for our country and for our people. And in this, during that time, which was one of the one of one of many worst times in the history of America, hell, I would even say the worst times in the world, we inevitably went ahead and started to do many, 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 many crimes. Uh, where it was looting, killing, burning, destroying, and harming many of our own people. And it was the worst of times, it was the lowest of times of thought because of a prominent person, a person that tried to keep a standard of non-savagery, inevitably losing his life for trying to go against the savageness overall in our nature, which is kind of an interesting dichotomy. But irregardless to that, let's bring it back to Star Trek. And that quote, that quote has meaning to that this episode are we too savage are we too too unhinged to be able to go and explore and help others well as you go through the, uh, the um through this scene through that scene um i, I cut it off early because i want to get copyrighted too <laughs> because i want y'all to also you know really grasp how this was portrayed and I don't think my words are going to do it justice inevitably uh, John Luke Picard says yes, yes we are guilty, as a human race we are guilty of being savages however let me be the one to show you how unsavage we are Hun, how, un, how unhinged we are how much respect and how we can earn the right to be able to explore and journey the cosmos. So I'm gonna leave that right there because I don't wanna spoil anymore. But that episode just pulled me in to wanting to know if we are really as savage as we, the claim is that Q is saying. We as humans just can't deny our nature. So I've gone over the episode and I've watched it numerous times before making this video. Um, just to make sure I was clear on what and exactly how he was seeing us from his perspective, from his viewpoint. And my, from what I'm pulling from my scrolls, I'm gonna have to say no. <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying no, no. I don't think that he, the uh, entire human race is savage and the reason why is because as I watched that episode there was a movie reference that came to me a particular scene and it's one of my favorite movies 
It's called The Matrix. Now, I love the entire series. Don't at me. Please don't at me. I like The Matrix. I like Matrix 1, 2, and 3. Don't at me, okay? But it was from Matrix 2. And it was the scene of Oracle and Neo in the park. This in Sunset. Their program's running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You'd never even know they were here. But the other ones, well, you hear about them all the time. I've never heard of them. Of course you have. Every time you've heard someone say they saw a ghost or an angel. Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So as you can clearly see, the Oracle was definitely inferencing the fact that when there are people who are doing what they're supposed to do, there is no chaos. There is no body making a reference to anything crazy or zany or anything like that at all. However, when you hear about the most is about people who are causing havoc. Every time you hear a ghost or a werewolf or a vampire or anything like that, and it's akin to what we have in our reality. Every time you hear about somebody being a murderer, uh, a, a rapist, um, which call it a killer or a stealing or someone doing something so outlandish. That's the only thing that's ever put out in the news. We never get the positive things, the people that actually do what they're supposed to do, work the nine to fives, help give a helping hand, a strive to be better than the savage that we are. That in itself, to me, my opinion, I think that we just have the dual, dual the, the duality. Damn. We choose to be savage or we choose to be peaceful. And I think that there, they, they, there was a movie dedicated to, to, to that. And I might post like a photo of it. It's called Lord of the Flies. It's like an hour and some change long where some kids got stuck on an island and then for some, they went back to savagery. Wow, there was only a few that went and kept their intelligence and their wits about themselves. We showed that, hey, we're way more than just our animal side. So I would have said no. And I would have fought tooth for nail to Q about that. For you to say that the entire race of human beings in this cosmos are just a savage, lowly species that can't explore the entire universe is just a mirror and a reflection of who you are. I think that would have pushed him back because um, during that episode, he was like, hey, we're gonna go ahead and shoot them if he says he answers with anything else other than that. So he had literally a gun to his entire crew. And mind you, well, not his entire crew. It was just the human race. Quite frankly, I would have fought it. I would have said, no, I disagree because we haven't done this for a while. Now, uh, I'm not a Trekkie, so I don't know everything about the Federation and all of the things that they have done that are bad, which I know that there are in the story in the series. However, I'm certain that by that point in time, uh, the Federation, where they've had all the alliances of the entire world, how they had all the alliances of the Milky Way, how they had all the alliances of other species that came into them, because in the original Star Trek, they were going against the Cleons. Now we in TNG, the next generation, the Cleons and everybody else is working with the human race. I would have to say that at this particular point, savagery has been reduced so drastically that it is not even a pinpoint on a, a, or even a blimp on the radar so that was that's my thoughts in the court case but hey you know maybe maybe i'm off base maybe i'm hitting this one and it's coming to a short stop or maybe just maybe i knock this one out of the park either or please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. What do you think? Do you think that we as a human race are just complete savages with no control over who we are 
or just savage alone. And we don't have the right to be able to venture out or to be better than who we are. Are we just that animalistic, that basic in mindset that there's just no way in, that we can go ahead and improve ourselves? And even if we improve ourselves, that's just like putting a mask on? Or we have to some degree defeated that savagery, that we are way better than just our animal nature, that we are as a species, as a human race, a lot more than just low animals. Thank you very much for coming to the temple. Please remember that this L is for you.